Hey guys, it is Wednesday, June 8th. I just got home from neuro lecture. I didn't make a video entry on Monday after class because basically today we talked about the same thing we talked about on Monday and just finished it up. Um, and I have my notes and my notebook so that I can give you detailed information about what we've talked about. Um, the CNS is composed of obviously the brain and spinal cord. The PNS involves the extremities and muscle movement. The largest part of your brain is the cerebrum and that has the cerebral cortex of course. And there's four lobes. The frontal which is your personality, intelligence and helps you see. The temporal is involved with your hearing. Parietal is motor, movement and coordination. And occipital is your vision. So, um, the second most important part of your brain is the cerebellum. That gives you equilibrium and balance. And the third is the brain stem, which has three parts. The midbrain, which is involved with your vision. The pons, which is the bridge where nerves cross. And the medulla oblongata. And she said that you should always remember the medulla oblongata because that helps regulate your heart rate and your respirations that's pretty much the reason you're alive without your medulla oblongata you wouldn't be living because you couldn't breathe um, and then the diencephalon has three parts and the CSF which is cerebral spinal fluid is manufactured in the ventricles in the diencephalon and the it's it's composed of the thalamus and the hypothalamus and the limbic system. The thalamus is your relay station. The hypothalamus, back in AMP when we learned it, we pretty much learned that the hypothalamus is like the thermostat of the body. It helps regulate your temperature. But it also does a lot more, um, obviously. And it's the brain of the brain. It helps control your whole body, pretty much. And the limbic system, that's where you know your personality comes from and your judgment and your intelligence. And then the meningiomas, the layers of the brain, brain, Whew, it's been a long day. Um, the outer is the dura mater, matter, however you want to say it. The area above it is epi, the area below is sub. And anytime you have issues with the epidura, it's a medical emergency, you're going to know right away. If it's a subdura um, issue, it takes weeks before you notice it. And then the arachnoid, you have the subarachnoid, which is below the arachnoid, and the space where the cerebral spinal fluid circulates is in the subarachnoid. Um, pia matter, pia matter, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato, lies directly on the brain tissue, and the cerebrum also has the cerebral cortex, which is made up of gray matter. And she wants us to know that it's very important that CSF it cushions, protects, and nourishes. And it has the highest concentration of glucose in the body. Um, also protein, salt, and urea. And then we also learned about the dendrite and axons. She gave us a bunch of quizzes today on this and I was always getting dendrite and axon confused because the dendrite is involved with sentry, aka afferent with an A which carries the impulses to the brain for interpretation. So the way she explains it is, you put your hand on a hot stove and it's like, okay, it's sending impulses to your brain like this is hot, you need to move your hand. The axon is motor, also called efferent with an E, which carries a message from the brain to the muscle to actually remove your hand off the hot burner on the stove. And neurons get their food from neuroglia, and there's 12 cranial nerves. The ones we went over, we went over all 12 of them, but the main one she wants us to focus on is olfactory, which is your smell, and that's optic nerve one. You have two eyes, so that's optic nerve two, vision, obviously. Third one that goes along with eyes is oculomotor. Um, that's your eye movement. You check with the pin light for that. And then four is the trochlear, that's also eye movement, and you can do the six cardinal gaze test to check their peripheral vision. And then four is facial, and the most common assessed nerves is two, three, four, is that a six? 
I think that's a six. So facial nerve is six. I can't read Roman numeral to save my life. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, definitely. So yeah, the most common assessed optic nerves is optic, ocular motor, trochlear, and facial. Um, so that's it for those notes. That's all I wrote. And your brain can only go three to six minutes without oxygen before irreversible brain damage occurs. So that's why it's so important that when a person comes in with IICP, increased intracranial pressure or intracranial pressure at all, it's important to assess their level of consciousness because if they go unconscious and they're not breathing at all, your brain can only go three to six minutes without oxygen before they can come back and be in a coma and become a vegetable. So yeah. Anytime you do a lumbar puncture, it's going to be in your L3, L4. Even though our textbook said something different, she told us to always remember L3, L4. And you do a Snelling's chart. That's the chart, like when you go to get a physical, and there's the big E on the top, and then the letters get smaller with each line. And we learned that if you cannot see the big E, you are blind. You're legally blind. Um, the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerves that you're swallowing and gag reflex. Ptosis means that you cannot blink. There's different types of aphasia. Um, receptive, amnesic, auditory, expressive, which is also known as brocas, and gibberish and global. And she also wanted us to know that herniation is the term used for when your brain gets sucked through the medulla. Um, she she made us like write that down and she was like, you have to know that for your tests and quizzes. So yeah, basically that's all we've been talking about. She gave us a little review from last mod because your hormones and everything kind of play a part in your neur neuro system as well. Um, and she, for a hypertensive crisis, she wanted us to remember that you can always give nipride IV and hyperstat is push. Um, and then today we just started talking about seizures, um, and everyone kind of thought I was an expert on that because I have them, and I was like, I mean, I'm learning different seizures that I've never heard of, and pretty much grand mal tonic clonic generalized seizures it's all the same type of seizure and usually after their seizure is done they don't they can't do nothing they'll go to sleep for hours because it just drains them um so yeah we talked about that and then we talked about the petite mall seizures those occur in children 5 to 12 years old and they last for a few seconds Anytime someone has a seizure, you want to document what happened before the seizure, document what happened during the seizure, document when the seizure started, when it ended, how long it lasted. Um, and pentobarbital is the drug to use to induce someone into a coma. Phenobarbital is an anticonvulsant. And the therapeutic range for bronchodilators and dilantin is 10 to 20 should never be anything less or more. We started talking about the TIA, which is a transient ischemic attack. Um, the same signs and symptoms of a TIA is the same for a stroke. Um, and usually a TIA is the warning sign that if you don't change your lifestyle or modify your lifestyle, a stroke is going to happen. And your normal PTT is supposed to be 60 to 70. You're going to give streptokinase for DVTs um, because it's a clot, clot buster, and you always want to give coagulants before any other kind of medication. And if anyone has a hemorrhagic stroke, they cannot cough, but they can breathe deeply. And the first thing you're going to want to do with someone that has a CVA, which is a cerebral vascular accident, aka stroke, you're going to want to administer oxygen. Um, because if their oxygen flow is cut off, they only have three to six minutes before they can potentially turn into a vegetable. And you want to keep their body in functional alignment, meaning you want to be doing passive range of motion if they can't lift the limbs and do it themselves, because if not, contraction can occur. And once you're contracted, there's no way that therapy can rehabilitate you to get that muscle back because it's already wasted and it's gone. So yeah. 
that's pretty much all we talked about. And then she gave us important dates for this mod. This mod, we have a lot of stuff to do. Um, the 13th, we have a project that she just gave us due. I have to do mine on ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, it only has to be 5 to 12 minutes. It's an easy A. I like presenting projects like that, actually. And then the 17th of this month, we have our neuro test. The 22nd of this month, we have our sensory test. The 27th, we have our Farm 3 Kaplan test. And we also have to... <sighs> We might start practicing for our P in competency, which means we pull out of a hat to see what skill we have to do and get checked off on it, and that goes to state boards. Um, July 11th, our case study is due. We go to clinical tomorrow. My group, we're going to be at the nursing home first for four rotations. So hopefully I get a good patient that has, you know, any kind of neuro or respiratory issue. And, um... June 17th and June 27th, we're doing the practice and checkoff for the PN competency. And July 13th is also a day for the PN competency if she can't get through everybody. Our class is fairly small. We only have like 14 people. So hopefully she can get through all of us on time. And then July 14th is our final. And then hopefully I'll be going into 233, which is my last class. And I just practice for the NCLEX. I'm very excited. Um, today was kind of a long day. She showed us a video on YouTube, but I wasn't even, like, paying attention because I don't learn watching videos like that. Like, I love watching hauls and stuff on YouTube, but when it comes to learning medical stuff for nursing, I'm like, mm, I can't do this. Another thing I forgot to mention was the Glasgow, Glasgow, however you want to say it, coma scale, the GCS, and that assesses their eye, motor, and verbal um, and that's how you can assess their level of consciousness and tell if they're in a coma, if their level of consciousness is just out of whack, and if something is wrong with their alertness. Um, but that's pretty much it. Bell's Posse. Bell's Posse. <laughs> is it Monday? Bell's Palsy occurs a lot in younger people, and stress brings that on. Um, it kind of looks like the side of their face is stroked, but it's not a stroke. So that's why it's important for people with Bell's palsy to not stress out. They want to be in stress-free environment. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's all we've really talked about up until this point. It's very windy out. Um, but yeah, I have clinical tomorrow. And then I should be training at my new job this weekend if everything goes through. I gave them my paperwork. I'm just waiting for them to call and contact me. So I hope you guys have a great hump day, and I will vlog tomorrow after clinical. Hey guys, it is Friday, June 10th. I forgot to vlog yesterday after clinical because I was just so tired. Um, basically, we had two patients apiece. Both of mine have Alzheimer's. Um, but the one lady I've had before in a previous clinical, and she's really nice. She's just nonverbal. And then the other lady is contracted, and she has to be fed. So yesterday, we got to do a bunch of wound care unsupervised. Like, the LPN that worked there would go in the room and tell us that she had everything laid out, and here's the doctor's order, and this is what you do. And she would walk us through, like, the steps that she does to dress the wound. So there was three of us in my group, and we all just took turns, you know, using the wound cleanser or putting on any of the Vaseline type of bandages and then wrapping it with the Krillex. Um, and that's pretty much all we did besides ADLs, bed, bath, and showers. We have three more rotations at the nursing home, and then we go to the hospital for four, and then that's it for this mod. Um, I just got done cleaning my car, so I'm like really tired. I'm getting ready to hop in the shower. But yeah, the weather's great, and I'm excited because I don't know if any of you guys read my blog, but I have like money saving tips and stuff, and I checked my power bill that's due on the first of next month and it's only $35.66 so I'm excited about that. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend and I will vlog hopefully Monday after class. Hey guys it is Monday June 13th. Class was canceled today. I got to school on time. I even got there a little bit extra early because we were supposed to present the project she assigned us for certain diseases and disorders of the brain and muscles. I had ALS, which is also Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, he was the Yankee base baseball player that 
ultimately died from the disease, so I printed out pictures, put them on poster board, had my note cards ready, got to school, I even stopped at Dunkin' Donuts for my normal caramel latte, and I was in a good mood. Um, and I got there, and there was like four other students, and we're all just talking about our projects and stuff, and then one of the ladies from the head offices came in with a sign to put on the door saying that our class had been canceled, you know, this morning, and that so-and-so would reschedule. So I was like, okay, if something came up, especially over the weekend, um, you might want to call during the weekend, because I know they have like a call service or whatever, and get that straightened out, and at least email your students Sunday night to be like, hey, don't even bother showing up to class tomorrow, because we have students driving from Carolina to this location and we also have people from you know further out driving to this location because where they live you know they don't offer programs like this school does so they have no choice but to go here because they're out in the boonies or they just don't offer the program they wanted at a certain college near them so you could have saved people a lot of time and gas driving all the way there because by the time everyone was leaving class, the people that lived further out were pulling up and were like, hey, class was canceled because she didn't show up or whatever. And yeah, people were pretty upset. So basically, I know I'm not the only student that does this, but I like live in my bed. Um, I do my homework there. I study there. I make my note cards there. I'm currently making drug cards there that are due tomorrow for clinical. So... Yeah, I've just been doing my drug cards. I have two concept maps due since we have two separate patients, so I'm going to work on that. And then I have to rewrite my nurse's notes because it wasn't up to par for her guidelines, even though I've been writing my nursing note the same exact way since I started the program, so now apparently it's wrong. And we graduate in, what, 69 days? Something like that? <laughs> like, really? But yeah, um, so I'm kind of glad I have a Monday off. Mondays are always hectic. But I'm trying to get stuff done for the week. The only thing that sucks about having class canceled is that it's going to push everything a day back. And like I said in an earlier vlog, I think like my first one for this class when she gave us the schedule for the mod. Um, we have a lot going on this mod. We have Kaplan. We have to do the PN competency. We have to do the math competency. Um, we have only three tests in this class so now that everything is getting pushed back we we kind of already know that Kaplan and our one of our tests are gonna be crunched in the same week and that's just gonna be hectic and crazy for us so hopefully it all works out um, I can't change anything I'm not the boss so I hope you guys enjoy your Monday hey guys I just got home from clinical it is Tuesday June 14th um, basically today we had to tell our instructor what types of medications our patients were taking and why they were taking them, what type of drug class it was, and then we administered them to the patient. We got the patient ready, we did all their ADLs, took them to the activity room or dining room, wherever they go, and then we did the wound care that was assigned to us. And right around noon, our instructor came into the little break room we were in and she's like, uh, you guys gotta bounce because State is in the building. For those of you who don't know, you can't be present in a facility if State comes to that facility, I guess because they don't want you to interfere with their investigation and they want to see the way the place runs without visitors and stuff in it, so it's just students can't be in a facility when state is in the facility that you're doing clinical at so we're kind of on standby for Thursday we don't know they can be there up until 72 hours so we don't know if we're gonna be there Thursday or if our DON at the school is gonna rearrange for us to do a clinical at another facility so yeah we're pretty much just on standby this is completely off topic but on the way home since I got out at like 1230 um, I stopped and bought a DiGiorno spinach and mushroom pizza. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that, but that is like, pizza in general is my favorite food ever, but that DiGiorno spinach and mushroom is my favorite pizza ever. For frozen, it just, it tastes amazing. So that's what I'm kind of snacking on. I'm trying to see what's good on Netflix since I'm home early. 
I don't really have any homework tonight. I'm going to read over the chapters and kind of brush up on the topics we talked about last week. Um, but since class was canceled Monday, we're going to have to make that day up. So everyone's just kind of like, what should I study? Should I study for a test coming up this week if she hasn't moved it or what? Hopefully we'll find out tomorrow. But I hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday and I will make my vlog tomorrow after class. So it is Wednesday, June 15th. Um, in my vlog from yesterday, I told you guys that we got kicked out of our clinical setting due to state being there, and this morning I went to class, everybody showed up, we were going to present our projects, and 8.30 rolls around, and our instructor still isn't there. So we saw a previous instructor that we had had, and we told her the situation. Um, our teacher never contacted the school saying she wasn't going to make it, she didn't have a substitute lined up, so that instructor called the DON of the program and she said to just cancel class. Um, and it's very unusual that our actual instructor didn't contact anybody, so everyone's kind of worried about her. Um, she did have issues with her hand that she had fallen on and she was supposed to get surgery, so we don't know what's going on with that. So we also found out that due to clinical being canceled yesterday because of state, and state usually stays for about 72 hours, our clinical instructor has contacted us and said that clinical is canceled for tomorrow. So what a great mod right before our last mod before we get pinned. Like, this week is crazy. So it's only 9, 10 a.m. in the morning, and I'm already home from class, and I'm off tomorrow. So... I'm probably going to start going through some things and really starting to deep clean um, just because that's what I do when I'm bored. I have tons of junk that I can go through. I'm also going to start studying because we don't know if we're still going to have our first test on Friday since this class has really hindered us. Um, so yeah, basically our test, she told us it was going to be on CVA, um, Cerebral Vascular Accident. But yeah, this this has just been a crazy week, and we have like three open Fridays this module, because we get a week off for the 4th of July, so we're thinking that all those Fridays we had off, we're going to have to make up these days that we've missed, but basically all week we have not had any class, and we've only had one partial clinical this week, so <laughs> it's been pretty crazy. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Hey guys, it is still Wednesday, June 15th. I just had the DO into my school and a couple classmates contact me to let me know that we do have clinical tomorrow. They've set it up at another facility and we're going to have a different instructor. And we found out that our classroom instructor had a little bit of issues over the weekend and now she's not feeling too well and she's very ill. So we're going to have a different instructor on Friday and next week. So... I'm kind of glad that everything is figured out because I was really stressing about it pushing us back further, but now we're going to kind of be on track. Everything is, like all of our testing will be pushed a day back, but we won't have to make up a clinical like on a Friday or a Saturday, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start reading over my chapters, wash some of my uniforms, and I'm so excited. This is completely off topic, but <laughs> I went to Ollie's and I bought a blender for 16 bucks and I made a smoothie. I love smoothies, especially in the summertime, and I usually go to Tropical Smoothie, but paying, you know, like five, six bucks for a smoothie is kind of ridiculous. So I went to Walmart because my boyfriend transferred me some money, and I went ahead and bought, you know, fresh fruits, but I also bought frozen for when I run out of the fresh, and I bought some almond milk and some vanilla low-fat yogurt. And yeah, it's delicious. I love my smoothie. This one is just strawberry banana. So yeah, I wanted to update you guys since I got all these phone calls coming in. So I do have clinical tomorrow and I'll let you guys know about the facility and everything because I've never been to this one. It's a different one. Um, yeah, so I will vlog tomorrow after clinical. Hey guys, it is Thursday, June 16th. I got home from clinical a little while ago. Basically, we didn't do much at this facility today because my instructor has only been there like one other time six months ago, I think she said, and I've never been there. The majority of the group has never been there. So basically, she gave us each a patient. We did ADLs. We did 
our med pass on that patient and then we pretty much took the whole med cart and went down a whole wing. Today made me really feel like a nurse because you know that's what nurses do. We pass medication, we assess the skin. We didn't do any wound care at this facility. Um, we did do skin assessments on a piece of paper. Um, it's basically like a picture of a body front, anterior and posterior, and you just circle the area where there's redness or a bruise, and then the skin management person at the facility will assess the skin for it, try to determine if it was an accident or if it was on purpose or intentional, um, what, what it was caused by. So we did those, and then basically that's all we did because it was an unfamiliar facility to us, and we aren't going to be there our next term. Like our, We're not going there next term, and we're not going there our next clinical for this rotation, so we didn't really need to get too deep into the patient we had. We didn't have to learn their medications and do a case study on them or anything, so that's good. We also found out about our teacher. She's having some personal issues, so we have a substitute tomorrow. We're going to have a sub next week on Monday and Wednesday. Basically, every Friday that we had off this mod, we're going to have to make up because we're two days behind now, technically, because we missed this week's Monday and Wednesday class. Um, and we were all kind of a little upset because, you know, someone should have contacted somebody to tell us, like, hey, there's no class Monday, Wednesday, we need to reconvene next week or something, because... We have people driving very far from certain places to get to school, so that's a waste of their gas. But anywho, um, I'm starting to feel like a nurse, and that makes me feel really great. We asked our instructor near the end of our post-conference, you know, can LPNs become certified wound care nurses? And she was like, of course. She was like, either your job will offer the courses, or they can tell you where to go. You can look at this state board nursing website to find out if there's courses offered in your area. Basically, you have to get certified in it, so you're going to have to take the continuing education courses, prove to them that you're competent in learning how to dress a wound and all that good stuff, and then you get certified. So that might be something I look into in the future if OBGYN don't work out, because that's really where I want to be. I really loved that rotation. But as long as I get a good job that you know pays pretty decent so that I can make my student loan payments and pay all my bills and really help people and put all these skills that I've learned to use I kinda don't really care where I end up at first and a lot of our instructors are like you might have to work in a nursing home rehab center for about a year just get that experience under your belt and then anywhere will accept you I'm willing to stick it out a year and you never know you might really like working in a facility like that it's just the facilities around here where we go for clinical there's only been like maybe two that weren't horrible like no like some of them are just just they smell the smell is what gets me if it didn't stink I could do it but some of these places smell some of them you know the attitudes of the workers I just I just couldn't work with it like I just can't so doctor's office is primarily where I want to be I don't want to work weekends because I've worked weekends as CNA forever so I want a standard Monday through Friday job. I don't care if it's 8 to 4, 8 to 5, 9 to 5, 9 to 7, as long as it's during the weekday. Um, and I know I've said that before in a previous vlog probably, but I just want a steady life pattern once I'm done with school. Like when, when I get pinned, I'm taking a week off from everything. I know I've said that before too, but I just want to cut my phone off. I'm not getting on Facebook. I'm not doing nothing. I just want to be left alone because fast paced programs, speaking from experience, nursing programs that are fast paced, um, you're just cramming everything in your head every five weeks. So by the time we get to the next mod and start learning everything, they say not to dump, but we end up dumping sometimes because it's just a lot to go through in a year and a couple of months. So I started rambling, I'm sorry, but I hope you guys enjoy your Thursday. Um, I'll let you guys know how class goes tomorrow once we get out. Today is Friday, June 17th. I left class early. It's only 1.15. We went to lunch at 12, and that's when I decided to go ahead and leave. Um, basically because the substitute we have, we have her for the rest of the mod. She's a really great instructor, and she gave us a bunch of handouts for what we need to learn and read and review for CVA and all the other neurological disorders that we kind of started at the beginning of the mod, kind of didn't. 
today basically when she handed everything out it felt like the beginning of the class all over again except we didn't get handouts and you know stuff like that at the beginning um, because of the other instructor we had so she's gonna be out the rest of the mod we have this lady um, and she gave us a packet to work on for neuro all the answers are either in the packet or they're in the textbook and our neuro test is basically the majority of it is CVA so that's what I'm gonna focus on in my textbook and in the worksheets that she gave us and basically the lady that controls the Kaplan's you know she watches our remediation time and she makes sure that we pass them she brought in our sheets today for all the tests that we've taken and in the top corner of mine it said that I'm cleared and I'm ready to go to 233 I just have to pass the farm 3 Kaplan that is next week or the week after one of those weeks so as long as I pass that I'm able to move on if I fail it I have to retake it at the end of this mod because you can't move on to leadership with any Kaplan's hanging over your head so oh, just one more thing to stress me out um, but basically I left early today because you know I can read the book and the worksheets that she gave us to do the packet of worksheets for CVA and all of that by myself I don't need her to be there for that and this week has just been a really rough week. We missed two days of class. Clinical was crazy. So I was like, you know, I'm exhausted. I didn't sleep well last night either because of the thunderstorms we had. The thunder was like crazy. It was really, really loud. Um, and I'm a light sleeper anyway. So I decided I would leave early, take a quick nap. I'm watching Jaws now, but <laughs> take a quick nap, get everything ready because I work this weekend. And Monday she said we're going to play Kahoot it and kind of go over things that we need to really focus on for the test on Wednesday. Everything has been pushed back and moved because of missing two class days this week so mods already off to a crazy start and I'm just ready to be done with it. We have 62 days left. So excited. Hey guys it is Monday June 20th. As soon as I start to vlog, everybody and their mom has to make noise, so I apologize if you hear jets, kids screaming, loud music, whatever. But today we basically finished going over neuro again. We started talking about, you know, seizures, myasthenia gravis, multiple sclerosis, ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, and that's pretty much all we really talked about. We just went over chapter 25, which, in oh, and Parkinson's disease. And... I wanted to vlog this because I had to stoop to a new low today. Um, I had to dig into my piggy bank and I decided to roll $30 of change because I need gas money and I need food money for clinical tomorrow because there's nowhere to put our food if we were to bring it at this facility so I don't want it to sit in my car because it's hot out and there's nowhere to leave it at the facility so I kind of don't have a choice but to eat out or starve so and starving is bad for you so yeah I um rolled $30 worth but I get these cute little pre-rolled rollers at the Dollar Tree for a dollar the whole bag is a dollar and I love that they're already like sealed on the bottom so that you don't have to do it like the old school flat ones you know I have some of them somewhere but yeah um, sometimes it's tough as a student and you fall on hard times I've kind of considered maybe asking my job if they need me a couple hours a week in the evening just to even if it just puts 40 extra bucks on my paycheck I mean I'm desperate and I really thought that especially now as close as we are to the end of the program I thought that I would look forward to you know taking the NCLEX after I take my week off and this and that but I'm really starting to debate I don't think I'm gonna take a week off I just wanna work full time and get money as a CNA until I get my LPN and work as LPN because this struggle is very depressing and it's very stressful and I will never do it again <laughs> and yeah so just wanna show you guys that but Tomorrow's our last clinical at the nursing home, and then we go to hospital, so that's exciting. I just got done doing my case study that is due tomorrow for her to look at. Um, I don't know why they make us do stuff like that, because they don't grade it and put it in a grade, like a grading system. They just look at it, put a check on it, and give it right back to you. So, 
I feel like that time that I consumed doing that, I could be studying for tests or getting ready for Kaplan. I still have a couple of drugs I need to do on the list they gave us for Farm 3 Kaplan, but whatever floats their goat. Yep, we're getting close to the end of the program, and it's very exciting. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm sorry, this is a boring, a boring entry. I would put vlog and boring together. You see what I did there? Wow. It's been a long day. It's Monday. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening, and I will vlog tomorrow after clinical. Hey guys, it is Wednesday, June 22nd. I just got home from class. We took our neuro test today. I got an 85. We're pretty much at midterm now, so she said whatever test you got today, whatever test grade you got today is the grade for your midterm grade, which is, I got an 85. I'm happy with that. Um, we've been through a lot this mod already, so it's like, oh, I just want to make it through. Um, but today we just did the neuro test, and then we started to play a Kahootit game for sensory. We're going to start learning about, you know, your senses. We talked a little bit about glaucoma, myopia, presbyopia, um, and then when I came back from lunch, a lot of the classmates were really irritated, so I was like, oh my gosh, what did I miss? So I guess they talked to the head coordinator of the program or whatever, and we found out that because the library where they usually hold our pinning ceremony, it's booked all the way through August. Our pinning ceremony is August 18th. So... Since it's booked, they pretty much just wanted to have us downstairs in a big classroom. And everyone got really upset about that because people have already planned to come, you know, from out of state to see us get pinned. And the school was putting more emphasis on graduation. And the reason why our class doesn't really care about graduation is because when we graduate, we're still just getting our certificate that we've worked so hard for, but the issue is that we're graduating with everybody that is involved with the school. So it's not just LPNs that are graduating together, it's the LPNs, RNs, medical assistants, dental assistants, all of the technology majors. That is everyone that graduates at one time. And I'm not going to, I don't want to say I don't care about their program or what they do, but I'm close to everyone that's in my class. It's kind of like, you know, my second family. I see them a lot. <laughs> I spend all week with them for eight hours. So it's just more sentimental to us for the pinning ceremony because, you know, we recite the nurse's pledge. We get to light the lantern. We get pinned by, you know, certain instructors and clinical instructors that we've had. And it's just more heartfelt, the pinning. Um, I will not be going to graduation. I'm not waiting until next year to walk across the stage in a black cap and gown and shake the hands of everybody and say, hey, I'm done. No. When I get pinned in August, I'm done. I want to start studying for NCLEX and passing and working. So, yeah, they were upset about that. So, and I completely see why I set up a GoFundMe page. We're trying to kind of look around and find our own venue and get funds. Some people in my class can't afford to buy the white dress, the white stockings and shoes we must have to get pinned. So we've kind of set up the GoFundMe. I'll leave the link below if anybody feels like donating. Um, but that, all of the funds we get is going to be for decorations, a cake, the venue. Anybody that can't afford the necessities for the pinning ceremony, it's for that. Um, but we've really all just come together. We're really trying to make it happen. It's the end of June, so we have until about the first week of Ju uh, August to get everything funding-wise set up because along with all that, we're going to be testing and doing all kinds of stuff for school. So we're trying to get it all organized. Um, but yesterday was our last clinical at the nursing home. Tomorrow is our first at the hospital for this rotation. Um, Basically, all we did yesterday was the same thing we've been doing. Um, we passed meds in the morning, we did ADLs, and then we went to lunch, came back, changed our patients, and then we were out. So, it was a fairly easy day. I'm already used to it because it's what I do at work, so it's like, oh, okay, here we are again. Um, but yeah, today was a pretty eventful day, I must say, but... Right now I'm not doing anything, I'm not studying or nothing because we have clinical tomorrow at a different facility so it's not like I have, you know, drug cards or anything to do. I don't know who my patient is, what we're going to be doing, so.
yeah, I'm just relaxing. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll probably vlog tomorrow after clinical. Hey guys, it is Thursday, June 23rd. Today was our first clinical at the hospital. We didn't really do much today. We orientated the whole hospital, literally. We went down like all of the back hallways. Um, we didn't get to see the morgue, but we went on each floor. The hospital we're at only has four floors. Um, we're gonna be on the fourth floor, which is med surge. Number three had oncology and like ortho joint and some neuro. Number two was neuro and then number one is basically their outpatient. They have some dialysis rooms. They have rooms for cardiac cath, cardiac surgery procedures happen down there too. So it's more like a cardiac center. Um, but it's a nice hospital. I was actually born at this hospital and so is my brother, but they don't have a labor and delivery unit anymore. Um, so the neuro floor, their rooms were humongous because it used to be the L&D ward. So I was like, wow, these rooms, you could fit like three beds in them. And then they were like, well, this used to be the L&D ward. So basically we just toured the facility. We did all of our paperwork on Tuesday. She told us to be ready to walk because we're going to be doing a lot of work. We're going to start out with one patient. If she feels that we're good at handling the one patient, she'll move us up to two. And basically, she's not going to make us do any drug cards or case studies or anything like our last clinical instructor did last week. Um, but she, she wants us to do two concept maps. But that's it. Those are easy. You can do those in like 15, 20 minutes. So yeah, today was a pretty good day. Um, we got out a little early. And tomorrow is a makeup Friday. We're going to be going over more sensory. I'm going to be a little late because I have a neuro appointment at my checkup or whatever. So, I hope you guys enjoy your Thursday, and I'll vlog tomorrow after class. Hey guys, it is Monday, June 27th. Basically, today in class, we didn't really do too much because our teacher was in and out of meetings with people of the school because she's going to be teaching several classes during day and night for the rest of this mod and next mod. She'll be our teacher for leadership, so that's exciting because she's a really great teacher. She wants to see us succeed. Um... And then we took our math competency exam, and you had to get a 100 on it, and if you didn't, um, basically she was just going to give you a couple more chances to take it and get the 100 because she didn't want a simple math test with 32 questions on it to hold you back from going to your next class. We were supposed to do the PN competency checkoff where you have a sterile procedure and a non-sterile, like inserting an indwelling catheter and DCing one. But we didn't get around to that today because of her meetings. Um, so tomorrow we just have clinical at the hospital. And then Wednesday we have our Kaplan for Farm 3. Um, it was going to be like 10 a.m. But it got pushed back to about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So yeah, I need to start studying the drug list. But that's basically all we did today. It was a really sluggish, slow, typical Monday. Um... I think just about everybody hates a Monday. <laughs> um, but I will vlog tomorrow after the hospital clinical because we're supposed to be getting our patient. And I'll vlog about what we do and how the day goes. So I hope you guys enjoy your Monday. It is Wednesday, June 29th. I forgot to vlog yesterday after clinical, so I will catch you guys up. Basically... Everybody had one patient they were assigned to, and we did vitals in the morning and then ADLs. And my patient was brought in for altered mental status, and we ended up having to set up the IV set for D5W50 solution and potassium phosphate. So I got the initial tubing set and the secondary priming tu prime tubing set, and then we set it up. And when we went to go set it up, the IV cath in her forearm, my instructor was like, well, it's a little flimsy. But we still set everything up, and it started working great. You know, once we had set it up, we made sure it would start flowing and everything. So I sat in the room with my patient um, because she was very restless, and she was a fall risk, and I didn't want her to fall out of bed. So I was just sitting there kind of watching her and monitoring her while I was writing my nurse's note. And then I started noticing that the blanket that was covered on her, you know, it was really wet. And she wasn't wet in her brief, so I'm like, okay, something is leaking. So I decided to take the ACE bandage off of the port, the catheter, for her IV. 
and I look and I'm like her IV is infiltrated so I found my instructor and then the nurse came in and we stopped the infusion and her IV was infiltrated was completely out of the vein and it was in like just barely hanging into her tissue and we learned a while ago that when you're giving potassium I through IV it's very dangerous and extra vasation can occur as well but we learned that the potassium it will just eat your skin it burns you up when it gets into the surrounding tissue so I was like oh my gosh thank God I found this you know um so that happened and you know I saved the day and by the time we got all that settled my instructor was working with another patient who was very adamant about things getting done and she took forever so we were already wrapping up the day and she didn't want me to start the new IV or do anything like that so I didn't get to start a new IV but I did find the IV infiltrated and I got to stop the IV because that's dangerous um yeah so that happened and then today we took our farm 3 Kaplan I passed with a raw score of 81.5 I didn't even ask what that converted to because I passed and I was like thank the Lord above <laughs> um, that's one less thing we gotta worry about tomorrow we have clinical at the hospital and then Friday we're just gonna be reviewing more respiratory because that's what our final is gonna be on and then Friday evening starts our 4th of July slash summer break for the week um, I plan on working a lot, trying to make some extra cash. But yeah, hopefully if I remember, I'll vlog tomorrow after clinical if we're not as busy as we were yesterday because she kept us on our feet. We were passing meds, watching what the other nurses do. Um, she even had us like clicking off, you know, on the electronic MAR and stuff, which some people, some instructors let you, some don't. So I felt like a nurse yesterday. And the, the closer we get to the end, and I know I said this in a previous vlog, but the closer we're getting to the end, the more I'm like, I feel like a nurse already. Like, I call myself a nurse. I'm a nurse. <laughs> so, yeah. 50 days left. I will vlog tomorrow after clinical. I'm going to go start working on my concept map that's due tomorrow. Hey guys, it is Wednesday, July 6th. I'm officially on break from school for the week. And as an early graduation gift... My mom got me a kitten. His name is Remington. Um, the vet said he's about six weeks old. The story behind him and his other four siblings that they found at my mother's job, um, they were found in a dumpster. She works at an auto shop, and the guy went back there to throw some boxes away, and he saw, you know, five kittens in the dumpster. So they put him in a box. So he is wild. Um... I have to save up money, obviously, to get him tested for, like, feline leukemia and all that good stuff and get his booster shots. But I already had cat food from spare cats that I had been feeding because there was a mom and three kittens. I don't know what happened to them. I don't know if animal control has picked them up. But, yeah, he's mine. Hi, BB. Um... It's kind of good timing that I got him because, you know, I can bond with him because he's still a kitten. Um, he's already using the litter box. He's really good about that. And he eats soft food very well. Um, and he loves to snuggle. And he loves to play. But um, it's also kind of a bad time because I quit my job on Sunday. I had enough. I'm tired of working short. I'm tired of busting my back working alone and working with people with terrible attitudes and working for the same amount that I can make w working with my dad. My dad was like, you drive all the way almost to another city, another state, just about the state line, um, and you could work with me landscaping, cutting bushes and pulling weeds and doing stuff, and you could make... Technically, I was making around 260 a month because I was only working every other weekend, and he was like, if you work with me even every weekend or pick up a couple weekdays, he's like, you'll make more or the same. You know, your bills will still be paid. So I was like, you know what, I only have like technically a month left of school, so I'm going to go for it. But yeah, I wanted to introduce you guys to my new baby. Um, my boyfriend knows that I got him. He will see him when he comes home eventually from deployment. So we have a new little baby to add to our family. <laughs> um, I hope he likes him. He's like more of a dog lover. I love dogs too, but how can you resist that little face? Uh, I just wanted to show you guys my new cat. Uh, I hope you guys had a great 4th. 
and I will vlog when school returns because basically all I'm doing is cleaning and going through all my stuff, trying to reorganize and get rid of crap I don't use. Hey guys, today is Monday, July 11th. Basically today in class we started talking about ABGs. For those of you who don't know, that abbreviation stands for arterial blood gases. And my instructor was nice enough to print us out a packet that has easy ways to analyze how to get the ABG and figure it out if it's like respiratory alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. Um, she also showed us two videos on YouTube. I can't remember the name of the channel. I can't remember the name of the actual video, but I know it was like easy ABG tic-tac-toe method. And the girl had really long brown hair and like a southern accent. She broke it down really well. Um, and that's what we watched today to start to kind of get the hang of it. But the six easy steps to ABG analysis. Number one is the pH normal. Number two is the CO2 normal. Number three is the HCO3 normal. Number four, match the CO2 or the HCO3 with the pH. Number five, does the CO2 or the HCO3 go the opposite direction of the pH. And number six are the PCO2 and the O2 saturation normal. So basically steps four through six is where the tic-tac-toe method comes in. Number one, two, and three steps is where you're just looking at your values of the ABGs. So, um, no, step number one, you're gonna analyze the pH normal range is 7.35 to 7.45. If it's below 7.35, it's acid acidic. Um, and if it's 7.45 or above, it's alkalotic. And analyzing the PCO2, the normal level is 35 to 45. If it's below 35, it's alkalotic. And if it's above 45, it's acidic. That is the only blood gas that switches. All of the other La like the other values, it's always going to be acid than base, but for the PCO2, it's going to be base than acid. Um, step three, analyze the HCO3. So the normal for that is 22 to 26, and if it's below 22, it's acidic, and if it's above 26, it's going to be alkalotic. And then basically step four, five, and six is where we did the tic-tac-toe method, and I wrote down the examples that the girl in the video gave us and she kind of did it with us obviously um so like this example right here the ph was 7.20 the pco2 was 38 and the hco3 was 17. so because the ph was 7.20 which is below normal that ph is going to go in the acid box and the PCO2 is 38, which is right in the middle, that's normal. So you're going to put in the normal. And then the HCO3 was 17, that's below, so it's acidic. So there's your tic-tac-toe. And because the PCO2 is in the normal range, it's metabolic acidosis and it's uncompensated. And any other time that there's nothing in the normal box and it's on either side, it's going, to be, it's going to be partially compensated because your body is trying to keep the gases going on its own, is basically what I got from the video. So that's how you set up right here is like kind of the best drawing I could do. You're going to do the acid, normal, and then base column, and then divide it up again so that you can put your other gases in there and then that's just how you figure it out this is all new to us so we haven't really gotten the chance to get the hang of it I feel like we should have learned this a while ago but yeah so that's basically all we did today she's gonna give us more problems on Wednesday but I won't be there because my boyfriend comes home from deployment so and we take our final Thursday tomorrow's our last day of clinicals hey guys it is Thursday July 14th I just got home from taking my respiratory final and I passed. So I'm going on to nursing 233, which is my very last class before pinning. Um, it used to be called leadership, but it's called role transition now. So basically we just take a bunch of Q banks and more Kaplan's and try to kind of prepare us for the NCLEX. Um, and we just basically kind of go over everything we've learned since nursing 101 and we just make sure that we're ready and feel prepared and feel like nurses. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm gonna spend my time catching up with my boyfriend who's finally home from deployment. Um, he's currently mowing the grass for me right now. Um, but I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will make my new vlog next week.